Hello, welcome to the first of the four basic tissue types lectures on the subject of the epithelial tissues. In this first part, we'll have a brief overview of the four basic tissue types and then discuss some characteristics of the epithelial tissues that set them apart from the other three types of basic tissue types. But before we dive in, let's quickly recall what the general composition of tissues are. The tissues and any type of tissues are comprised of the cells and of course there are a number of different types of cells depending on their morphology and function. And in between the cells we have the ECM, the extracellular matrix. An extracellular matrix themselves is comprised of different types of fibers, ground substance, and fluids. The four basic tissue types of the body have these tissue compositions in common in that they're all made up of the cells and the ECM. It's just that their proportions are quite different across the four. Epithelial tissues are characterized by cell-rich but ECM-poor composition. So I'm drawing a bunch of cells with their nuclei in the center stacked right up next to each other with very little ECM in between the cells. Where there are a little more ECM is kind of right under the epithelial tissue. There's epithelium that is separated away from the underlying connective tissue, which is a second type of the basic tissue types. Connective tissues are characterized by ECM-rich but cell-poor tissue composition. So you may see some cells that are scattered around but separated away from each other by lots of ECM. So that's characteristic of the connective tissue that is different from the epithelium. Then the third type of basic tissue type is the muscle tissue. This is another type of tissue that is relatively cell-rich and ECM-poor, although the ECM is a lot more than the epithelial tissue. What is unique about the muscle tissues is the fact that the, the cells that comprise this tissue are specialized to have these structures in the cytoplasm that alternate. These are the actin and myosin filaments that give the muscle cells the ability to contract and relax as a unit. And of course in between the muscle cells there are some ECM and these muscle cells or units of muscle cells are also supported by some specialized connective tissues as well. That's muscle tissue. We'll discover more in detail at later lecture. Then fourth tissue type is the neural tissue, where again, the tissue is comprised of a number of these specialized cells called neurons. Neurons. And these cells are specialized to receive signals from the external environment or other neurons, then transfer the action potential down its length and kind of trigger or influence the effector organ in a distant site. Neural tissues also have some specialized stromal or supporting cells collectively called glia. That's, that provide a lot of supporting functions as opposed to the connective tissues. In terms of the ECM, yes, there are ECM components, but very few fibers are found in the ECM of the neural tissues. Instead, there are a lot more ground substance and fluids than fibers in the ECM. So these are the general four tissue types we're seeing here. But today's topic, of course, is the epithelial tissue. To reiterate, the epithelial tissue is comprised of 
mostly cells and little ECM. And what little ECM is there? It's mostly concentrated in these separation point between the, e the epithelium from the connective tissue down here. Incidentally, there's another type of epithelium that's shown right here with the basement membrane and cell-rich component in the middle. Such epithelium that's surrounded mostly by the connective tissue such as this is called glandular epithelium. And epithelium that is largely kind of sitting on top of a connective tissue is called lining or covering epithelium. So there are two subtypes of epithelial tissues. One is lining slash covering, the other glandular. We'll discuss more in detail of these two different subtypes of epithelia as we go along. At this point, it's worthwhile kind of tracing the etymology of this term epithelium. Epi refers to above or upon, Thelium refers to nipple, suckle, or nourish. So epithelial tissue is something that sits upon that may look like a nipple or can also provide nourishment such as the glandular tissue. And there's a lot of reference on nipples in histology as you'll find out throughout this course, so stay tuned. What are some epithelial tissue specific characteristics? Well. First of all, we have to remember that the epithelial tissue is so cell heavy and ECM poor that the tissue integrity really depends on the abundance of cell to cell junctions. These are specialized cell membrane structures and some intracellular structures that reinforce for the cells to be held together fairly tightly. You can imagine should the cell cell junctions get weakened somehow, how the epithelial tissue might be easy to disintegrate or get damaged. Furthermore, the epithelial tissue is held pretty tightly to the underlying connective tissue here by cell to connective tissue junctions, specifically called hemidesmosomes, which, which we'll look at in more detail later. But very important also, and should they not function properly, you can imagine how the entire epithelial tissue may get kind of lifted off of the connective tissue, which would be terribly painful and just not good. Another characteristic of epithelia is that they sit on top of this acellular ECM structure called the basement membrane, also known as basal lamina. This is again the ECM that is produced by the epithelial tissues in part and the other part that's produced by the cells of the connective tissues. So the two different ECMs from the two different tissue sores will be fused and form this lovely boundary between the epithelia and the connective tissue. The epithelial tissues in general, if not always, are associated with the connective tissue and this is very important because of the next characteristic, the fact that the epithelial tissues are avascular. They do not have any blood vessels that course through the tissue, which means the epithelial tissues are heavily dependent, if not entirely actually, on the blood that courses through the capillaries in the connective tissue. Connective tissue itself is vascular. So the epithelial tissues depend on the connective tissue vasculature to provide nutrients through diffusion. Which also means that there's also a limitation in terms of how thick an epithelial tissue can grow. Because as you can imagine, as the epithelial tissue gets thicker, the cells that are farther away from the source of nutrients will start to experience starvation. And in fact, you will see that in some, some tissues, the cells starting to flatten out and even die and eventually slough off, like so. So the close association between the epithelial tissue and the underlying connective tissue is critical for the nutritional support of the epithelia, 
but then it can also limit the thickness of the epithelial tissue as well. And as we've seen, the epithelial tissues form an interface between two different environments. So here is one environment, usually an external surface or inside of a gut tube, that's an external environment, and another environment down here, which is usually a connective tissue. This also means that any materials that need to be transported in between the two environments have to go through the epithelial tissue itself. So very important filtering function is provided by the epithelial tissue. And this also means that the epithelial cells have polarity, that there are apical surface, which means the surface that is facing the external environment is specialized in its membrane to perhaps bind a material then transport it into the cell by endocytosis. Then we have the basal side of the cell facing the basement membrane, which may be specialized to, number one, bind to the basement membrane, and also to transport this material out into the connective tissue through exocytosis. And then we have the lateral sides of the epithelial cells that are specialized perhaps to form these cell-cell junctions, which are so critical for the integrity of the epithelial tissue. Another characteristic of epithelial tissue is their high mitotic index, meaning the cells of the epithelia are undergoing cell division at a much higher rate compared to the cells of the other general tissue types. And this makes sense considering that one side of the epithelia are typically exposed to some kind of an external environment, and some cells are sloughing off. Therefore, the basal side of the epithelia will need to divide and in order to replenish and maintain that tissue. But this, unfortunately, also means that the epithelial tissues are probably the most susceptible to the stress-induced dysplasia or acquiring mutations from DNA replication that can result in cancer. So most cancers in the body typically arise from the epithelial origin. And lastly, and as previously mentioned, there are two different types of epithelial tissues based on their function and location. First, we have the covering epithelium, which forms an interface between the two environments with similar amount of surface area exposed to the external environment and the connective tissue underneath. The covering epithelia will typically provide some level of protective function as well as controlled transport of materials across the epithelia. Then we have glandular epithelium, something like this, which is usually encased within the connective tissue. There are still two environments where the epithelial cells are forming an interface. We have a small opening here called lumen and another environment out here, which is a connective tissue. But as you can see, the surface area facing the lumen tends to be much smaller than the surface area in contact with the connective tissue. The glandular cells will produce things that'll be stored in small vesicles and eventually be released into the lumen. Such glands where the cells are releasing their products into the lumen are considered to be the exocrine glands because the lumens are usually connected to the surface epithelium and will drain their products into the external environment. So that's exocrine gland. But there are also some epithelial cells or glandular cells that are producing and releasing their products, not into the lumen, but into the connective tissue. At which point, the products are picked up by the nearby blood vessel. So we're not releasing the products into the external environment, but into our body. And such glands are considered to be the endocrine glands. So there are two types of glandular epithelia 
exocrine, and endocrine, and we'll discuss these in detail later on this lecture. And that's it for now for the overview of basic tissue types and some unique characteristics of epithelial tissues. In the next part of the epithelial tissues lecture series, we'll discuss what's holding the epithelial tissues together and it to the underlying connective tissue. Thank you for watching this sample video from our histology video course. You can access the entire video course along with the histology lab videos, practice questions, and outline format ebook on our website, dviacademy.com, which is linked in the description below.